today I'm going to do a drawing with these Montmartre oil pastels. I bought them recently and you can see the art haul video that I did during February if you click on this little link up here. And I've been wanting to try some oil pastels out for a while and I do have a couple of small sets of Sennelier crayons but I haven't really used them that much and I thought I kind of want to just get something that's not too expensive that if I make a mess out of it's not the end of the world so I saw this I got the biggest set that I could find which was 48 colors because I always enjoy having more colors than I need <laughs> and oh just let me pull these out that is totally stuck give me a minute I'll pull them out the other end okay that took me a while so here we go we have two lots of oil pastels what gives me hope is that they actually have names on them sometimes I find if you get something that's really cheap and nasty it won't have any names but this one says indigo although it looks quite purple to me but <laughs> purple violet lilac pink turquoise green blue celeste okay it's an interesting name cerulean cobalt blue all right so these are the crowns i'm going to use today i really am not very confident with them and i don't have much experience i have looked at a few youtubes and other information online but really i just want to get into it the best way i learn is just to jump in with both feet most of the time my picture today that I'm going to be drawing I just did a quick little printout although it's not the greatest copy it's a photo of a scarlet macaw I took this photo in 2015 I think and I've linked it in the bottom I've actually uploaded it onto my Pixabay account so it's free for you to use you can download it and use it as you wish and if you want to follow along I am going to be speeding up the drawing probably because it is going to take quite a long time to do but if you want to have a go at drawing this or painting it please feel free to do so the photos free you don't have to pay for it yay I do love Pixabay for that because I use a lot of photos off there I thought it was only fair that I should upload some of my own photos for other people to use I'm going to draw the picture on this let me turn it up the right way this pastel Canson Mitons paper now this is a pretty old pad actually a friend gave this to me because she didn't want to use it or didn't need it and I'm trying to use this paper up before I go out and buy more paper because otherwise I just end up with so much of it so I'm going to use a sheet of this I'm not sure if you can see it's got quite a texture on it so I'm hoping that's not going to be too detrimental but I didn't want something too smooth because I think I might want to layer so I thought I'd go for a paper that is designed for pastels and we'll draw it it is an A3 I thought I would go a little bit bigger because the pastels aren't exactly very fine points so a bigger space means I don't have to be quite as precise and I have drawn out my picture already which is over here so I've just drawn my macaw out on some plain white paper the art studio quick rough sketch pad acid free 30 sheets so I think it's roughly about 110 GSM it's just regular white cartridgey printery sort of paper I find these are very handy it's so smooth I did think about trying to color on this but I just think I might have a few issues because the paper is quite thin and you can see I've already managed to bend it so I'm going to trace this out onto my Canson paper and then I will start drawing oh, I'm a bit nervous I really hope I don't stuff it up <laughs> especially when it's on camera okay so what I have here is my a3 light pad that I got off eBay brilliant devices get yourself one they're cheap they're excellent they just plug into a usb port and let's turn it on there we go magic now when i drew my parrot i've drawn it a little bit towards this side i think i might actually prefer to center it for the purposes of this drawing so i'm just going to move my matons paper across okay so got a trusty blackwing pencil here 
and I'm just going to quickly draw it out. I really should use my thingy, shouldn't I? Although I suppose it doesn't matter too much because I am going to be using oil pastels, so really the oil of my hand is not going to make much difference, but it's just good practice, and then I can lean without worrying about ruining the paper before I even get to use it. Alright, so I'm just going to draw my outline on. When I draw my final outline, I try to do long smooth strokes with the pencil rather than like sketchy lines like that, otherwise when you finish the drawing you're going to have this sort of really sketchy look and it's not really ideal, I, unless of course that's the look you're going for. But if you can try and draw a continuous line, it's a lot better and you find that you will have a lot more of a nice polished drawing. Obviously when you're sketching out something to begin with it doesn't really matter but I have been trying to not do that in my final outlines. Tracing like this is really good for helping your precision. Oops and I just bumped it and lost it a tiny bit there. I should have stuck it down but I didn't. So yeah can you see I just turned the light down a little bit on that? Let me just show you. If you touch this one, it brings the light up or down. So it's pretty cool. I like this one a lot. I think I only paid about $16 for it. It was about $40, but I had a discount voucher from eBay, so I used it to buy this. I've got an A4 size as well. Because I find with this one... If you put a, you know, if you just want to trace, say, an A5 or an A4 page, you have all this really, really bright, empty space, and it just destroys my eyes. I've got very sensitive um, eyes to light, so I prefer it when I can cover the whole thing with paper. So that's why I decided that I wanted an A4 as well as an A3 size. The A3 size is fantastic for larger pieces though. It is excellent. Okay, getting to the end of this. That eye, as always, the eyes are, I find the most difficult thing. I tried very hard to get it in the correct placement. It's probably not exactly right, but I think it should be okay for this drawing. And just get that pupil in just so I can see where it is. These lines here are actually lines of the, the red feathers, if you see on the photo. And there we go. I'll just add in those little extra lines just for guiding. Okay, and I am good to go. Okay, here's my finished outline. I'm looking at it and I think I might actually take off some of that pencil because I was pressing relatively hard and of course this paper is very toothy so it's picked up the pencil very very darkly so get out the old kneaded eraser and I'm just going to do what I usually do and just take off that top layer of graphite. I also don't want the pencil to mix in with the wax crayons because graphite is like a lubricant, it's slippery and it can actually affect how your oil based products will work so I think it's always a good idea just to take that really top layer off and the rest of the graphite's probably embedded more in the paper so that shouldn't be a problem. You know what the worst part of the drawing is is starting it's so hard sometimes to know where to start and I've been thinking about this one I always have that dilemma as to whether I should do the foreground first or the background first and I think with this one I am going to do the background first and that is because if I just quickly whip out my little print print out here you see how the blurry the background is so because when I photographed this I just wanted the bird in I shot on a, a very shallow depth of field so only the bird was in focus and 
just the rest of it, all the green leaves and trees around it were nicely blurred. So I think what I'm going to do is the blurry background first and then draw the parrot on top so it kind of comes out towards us and hopefully gives that nice 3D effect. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for them. I may choose other colours. I might go a little bit of this, what is it, the turquoise as well. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with the background and hopefully manage to make something that isn't a complete mess. Wish me luck! I eventually got started and I just began by scribbling out different colours onto the page. I started with the darker and kind of went to the lighter. You can see just how textured this paper is and it's a right mess at the moment. I can say that. But really all I was trying to do was cover the whole background and just get some scribbly marks on there. The crayons went down really easily and I had no problems at all with them. I keep calling them crayons but they are oil pastels. I'm gradually going in with lighter and brighter greens and a little bit of that yellow up there. Okay, so next I wanted to blend everything together and I started off with a folded up paper towel and that worked for a little while as you can see they are blending really well but it was still quite a struggle so I got some linseed oil just to dampen the towel and that helped make it spread a bit better. However I found that the paper towel started to break up so I grabbed a piece of old rag which I think is a cut up pillowcase and as you can see the oil pastels had started to dry onto the paper and they were just not blending in as well as they were at the beginning and it was really really hard on my arm and my wrist but it's those Valentine's Day hearts all over again I just found it quite difficult so in the end I just gave it a quick little scrub over just to cover the whole thing and then I decided that it was just going to be too hard to continue using the rag to blend so I went over a bit more to add another layer of oil pastel on top just to get a bit more wax or oil onto there and then I actually got a paintbrush and dipped it into the linseed oil and I found that that was so much easier to spread everything and you can see that I'm doing a small patch at a time and then using the rag to kind of blend everything over gently and it was a lot less stress on my wrist. I shouldn't really be using linseed oil on plain old paper although it did hold up quite well really you want to use oil on something that's been gessoed but in this case I'd already started it and I wasn't too bothered. I'm using a very coarse hair paintbrush here which is one that I would use for oil painting. Do not use paintbrushes that you're going to use for watercolors or acrylics or any other water-based medium. Use a paintbrush that's designed for oil painting. You want the stiffer brush to get that crayon into the background and this worked out really well, I was quite happy with it and the blending with the rag just sort of smoothed it out that little bit. And now I'm moving on to the parrot itself. This was a lot more fiddly because it was very very detailed and I spent a long time on this. So I'll just let you watch and you can see how I go. I'll come back again in a little while.
I painted with the tiny brush directly onto the oil pastel because I really needed to get some tiny details going and using the pastels themselves was a total no-go in that respect. So you can see where I do the little details with the tiny brush. And it came out alright. It was quite a good way to do it. Around that face it was very difficult otherwise. And those red lines are the tiny little feathers around its face. I'm pretty much doing the same thing as I did on the background, starting with the darker colour and moving outwards to the lighter or the greener colours. I began by painting the red and then I decided I really should start on the outer side and blend the lighter colour into the darker colours because otherwise the dark will just go out too far onto the light colours if that makes sense, whereas it's a lot easier to blend light into dark I find and it looks pretty cool painting that linseed oil over the pastels it's almost like magic how it just dissolves i was quite impressed with how well it did i knew linseed oil or another oil based product would probably dissolve them out you could probably use odorless mineral spirits but because the oil pastels were so thickly oiled, I thought a linseed oil would be nicer and a bit smoother than the odorless mineral spirits. The only downside with painting it out is now the whole bird is looking quite flat. So what I had to do was go back in after I'd finished blending and reapply those oil pastels over the top to try and build up the layers and give it a bit more life and a bit more texture in those feathers. Just so you know, I really had no idea what I was doing. I was making it up as I went along and hoping that something would come out. I decided to try and add some more depth to the background by adding some more pastel on it and I was also just making sure that the edges of the bird were nice and neat. I still had quite a lot of texture on the background and as you'll see I never really got it out. I tried but it was kind of lifting the bottom layer and after a little while I just decided that I was going to leave it as is. But here you can see me blending out what I can here and then I move on back to the macaw. The scarlet which was my darkest red was just not dark enough so I pulled out that burnt umber crown and I'm going over some of the areas of shadow and 
just trying to define some of those feathers. And then I'm adding some of the white pastel just to get a few highlights into the bird. They're not particularly noticeable in the photo but the drawing really really needed it and I stuffed that eye up a little bit so I had to go back and now I'm just adding a few slightly brighter highlights. The white is not as opaque as I would like but it did a reasonable job and I managed to get something out of it. Okay, so I've gotten to a point on the macaw where the crown is really just starting to come off a lot more like you can see bits and pieces and I don't want to put too much more on because it's all coming off onto my hands I mean they're disgusting at the moment everything is waxy I probably could do more on the background but I don't think I'm going to get rid of this texture I think if I did another piece I would try it on much smoother paper because this one you can really see the texture coming through and I don't know it's it's not a bad thing but I would prefer it to be smoother but this is what I got with my paper that I used the colors are really bright and I enjoyed using them but it was pretty tough so <laughs> I don't know it's not the worst thing I've ever done in my life um, but maybe I will try something like this again with different paper and see if I can get a better result I'll just give those highlights a little bit of a smudging see I keep playing with it and touching it <laughs> and I could just see I've already kind of muddied it up in a couple of places. I was trying to get the green to sit on top, but they are quite transparent, and so I wasn't getting that nice opaque look that I wanted. But this was an experiment. It at least looks like a bird. <laughs> so I'm going to call that a win. The colours are fabulous. I really enjoyed using these oil pastels. I've used some of them quite a lot, as you can see, and what a mess. I might have to sit there and scrub all of the extra colours off. I've got oily tissues everywhere, I've got this rag which I think is beyond rescue so I think I'll probably just bend that as well and the other thing I was thinking of with these is that I don't think they come as singles so if I run out of colours I'm just going to have to buy another set but the good thing is that at least they're cheap and you can get smaller sets so hopefully the colours I run out of will be in the smaller sets. But that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. Maybe you can come up with something better than my drawing. <laughs> if you do, please let me know. Tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you come up with. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks again for watching. I'll swatch you later. Bye.